Every Souls-like game has that one boss. You know the one that really pushes you to your limit and challenges you, but ultimately makes you better at the game? Yeah, this is not that. Straight up, I did not enjoy this boss fight, but I do think I figured out the best way to beat him. So let's take a look at how to take down the fallen Archbishop. Before we get started, let's go over a couple of quick things. Fire is gonna help us out a lot. So I'll be using my Salamander Dagger Blade, upgraded to level three, and I really like the Fire Axe handle with it because it gives me good range. And I'm also gonna be using the Flamberge as my Legion Arm. For accessories, I'll be using the Conquering Amulet, which you can get from the Merchant Aladoro in exchange for the King's Flame Ergo. Now this amulet will give you a temporary damage buff following a perfect guard. Now it does weigh a lot, so you just want to make sure you have your capacity up high enough so that you're not running into the fight heavy. I'll also be using the Life Amulet, which increases overall HP, and I'll be using the Workshop Union Standard Corrosion Resistance Converter, which enhances our resistance to decay because this boss does have a couple of decay attacks. The Fallen Archbishop does have two phases. Phase 1 is a relatively straightforward boss encounter, but Phase 2 is where things start to get a little tricky. But understanding the first phase is really the key to the entire fight. So let's take a look at his attacks in Phase 1. He does a tongue whip from the front and then follows it up with another whip from the side. This attack pretty much always happens just like this, so once you get the timing down, it should be pretty easy to perfect block. Next, we have this right hand swipe, followed by the right hand slam, followed by the left hand swipe. Another variation of this is just the single right hand slam, followed by the left swipe. Pretty much any time he hits you with that right hand, he's going to come back with the left swipe, so that's definitely something you have to look out for. And lastly, he'll do this forward lunge with both hands, and then he'll turn to the right, and then immediately follow up with a big swipe. And for Fury attacks in Phase 1, he'll raise up and then slam down. Now for this, I find that it's easier to just run away, and if you stay close, you can usually run in and get in a couple of hits. But it can also be perfect guarded if you've got the right timing. Now Phase 2 is where things get a little more complicated, and there's some more diverse attacks. He'll basically attack from either the front or the back, and when he attacks from the front, he does a lot more ranged attacks and combination sweep attacks. To keep things simple, I found that the best way to deal with the second phase is to just keep your distance and wait for him to turn around. If we're fighting the back part, we already know those moves from the first phase. There is a little variation there, but most of the moves are exactly the same. The other thing to look out for in phase two is this big Kamehameha attack that he does, which does have the potential to one-shot you if you're not careful. There's basically two parts to this attack. He'll charge up and fire this big blast, and then he'll slam down and that'll create a shockwave. To combat this, we want to stay close to him to avoid the charge attack, and then run away to avoid the slam. So before we jump in, let's recap. Here are our keys to success. We want to use fire, get the timing down for phase 1, make sure that we're keeping our distance when he attacks from range on phase 2, stay behind him as much as possible to fight the back part, and then watch out for that big AoE attack. Okay, now let's jump in. All right, once we enter the battle arena, it is game time. Uh, we're gonna immediately lock on and then run in. Typically I like to wait for him to make the first move just to see what he's coming at me with. Uh, so he's gonna go right in with the tongue whip. It's fine, we know that move. I'll try to go in and get a couple of hits, which totally whiff. that lunge move and then he's gonna do a big sweep across he goes in for his first fury attack but we're able to stagger him out of it and light him on fire which is good get some good damage in there and then probably could have been a little bit more aggressive there but thought that he'd come in with an attack he'd get our first stagger window and I just completely whiff the charged heavy try to go in with another charged heavy and I hit it, I just completely missed the stagger window, so don't do that. He's in with the slam. And then there's his first fury attack he's able to get in. Again, I find it easier to just run away, but try to stay a little bit close because you can get a couple of hits in when he lands. Now we're able to get another stagger window. Try to be patient there, just wait for the opportunity, but miss it. We're finally able to get in with the charged heavy. We get our first fatal attack. 
Get some good damage in there. Catches me mid heal. And then he catches me a little bit too close to him there. I wasn't really ready for that, so I had to block it. Uh, fortunate with the timing there. The timing is just a little bit tricky, but again, we're able to catch him on fire, so that's good. Really just resisting the urge here to not get too aggressive, because that's typically when you'll get in a lot of trouble. But feeling pretty good about it so far. He gets me there. And then it is on to phase two. So for phase two, he's got a lot more of those ranged attacks. There probably will come a time in this fight where you need to uh, use the grindstone to increase your weapon durability. That's kind of a good window to do it because he kind of waits a few minutes before he lunges at you. And if you are going to fight this side of him, kind of head on, I feel like it makes more sense to kind of try to move in close so he can't get you with those big sweeping attacks, but uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of luck with that strategy. I'm kind of trying to stay around to the side of him, hoping that he'll turn around. I'm trying to avoid those big sweeping attacks. Uh, so this is the Fury attack that he does in Phase 2. It's basically the same as in Phase 1. He just gets a little bit taller, uh, then slams down. So it's basically the same thing. I just run away, try to stay close. And then once he turns around, uh, we're, we're feeling pretty good at this phase, because we know this guy. We fought him before. We know these moves. There is some variation. He's got a couple of different attacks, but for the most part, they're the same. And anytime he does the slam with the one hand, we know he's going to come across with the sweep on the other hand. Again, with that Fury attack, just I like to run away. It can be blocked, but I find the timing to be a little bit weird. Big swipe there. Again, trying to resist the urge not to get too aggressive. We're able to get a good stagger and light him on fire. I use my Fable Arts there, uh, Fable Art Dagger, to light him on fire even more, get some good fire damage in. And we're able to get a Fury attack in this phase. Feeling pretty good about the fight at this point. And then once you get his health in this phase to about a quarter of the way down, uh, that's when he'll typically charge up to do that big Kamehameha attack. Again, the strategy here is to kind of stay close to him so that he won't hit you with that big blast. And then run away so that he doesn't get you with the slam and the shockwave. Just really resisting that urge at this point to not get too aggressive because that fourth and fifth hit is really what gets you in trouble. Kind of catches me off guard there. I was in a little bit too close, but we're able to perfect block. He goes in for it again and again, just like to, to run away and then come back in and get a couple of hits. We've got him backed into a corner. Probably get a little bit too aggressive there, so he catches me off guard. But feeling good about it at this point. Use the Fable Arts again, light him on fire, have him back in the corner, and that's when you just go for it. I hope this video has been helpful, and if so, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know. And be sure to subscribe for even more Lies of P content in the future. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.